Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the show, and I'm so glad you're here in this incredibly beautiful place. We are here at Hotel Domestique uh, in Traveler's Rest, South Carolina. And I'm here with Sarah. Sarah, how you doing? Good, how are you? Yeah, I'm so good, I'm so good. I'm really excited to talk about this place. Mm -hmm. Um, so what we're doing right now is I'm, we're obviously kind of all recording this for the podcast. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that so everybody who's in the podcast mm -hmm. understands, uh, but we're also doing a lot of video for this as well. Hotel Domestique has got to be one of the most beautiful, most luxurious, mm -hmm. most, uh, unique places anywhere in the upstate of South Carolina. I mean, mm -hmm. I'd even argue in the Southwest. I mean, it's, it is a very beautiful place. Truly unique. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the reason we're talking today is mm -hmm. because you guys also do weddings here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, just to get, just to get us started, can you give us a little bit of background, a little bit of history behind uh, hotel domestique? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so the property was completed in 1999. Mm. Um, the original owner was Raymond Stam. Um, he named this property Lava Steed. A lot of our uh, guests that come up still think that we are Lava Steed or they haven't been back since Lava Steed. Mm. Um, but Raymond's idea for this property was, <clears throat> Uh, to create a French villa, so cobblestone roads, French bakeries. Um, you see the vineyards when you when you drive up. Uh, he went. That was actually his draw to the location. First and foremost was that the elevation and climate he felt uh, would be ideal for grape growing. Hmm. Um, so they did produce grapes. They did uh, create really fantastic wine. Um, but it wasn't until a little bit later he sold uh, the property to his partner and also uh, the founder of the Cliffs, uh, Jim Anthony. Um, and then what Jim Anthony did was he used this property as a sales office and accommodations for potential clients for the Cliffs members. Gotcha. Um, and then that's when the helicopter pad went in. Mm. So when their clients would come and stay, they could fly them around, show them their home sites. Um, and then, of course, uh, the real estate market crashed in 2008. Then the property was foreclosed on. Um, from there, George and, Hin George and Rich Hincapi brothers, <clears throat> um, they bought the property in 2011 and then just completely modernized it. And mm. it became Hotel Domestique and Restaurant 17. Okay, that's amazing. Yeah. And I definitely want to get into Restaurant 17, yeah. too. Um, I, I know people listening to you probably heard helipad and they're yeah. like, hey, like what? what? So we'll get to that too. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. Um, I think one of the things that we were talking about before mm -hmm. we started recording, this is a very different place mm -hmm. and the way you guys do things here is very different, which mm -hmm. I love because mm -hmm. it very much imitates my photography studio and, and the way we do things. Yeah. So, um, kind of take me through how is it different when a couple comes here to have their wedding? you know, versus honestly, just about any other venue. So we are a very small and intimate space. Uh, we have 13 guest rooms. And when we have weddings take place, we ask that our clients book out the hotel for two nights. Mm. So their wedding quickly turns into a family reunion as well. Um, which from my experience, when I got married, uh, one of my biggest regrets was not spending enough time yes. with my family. You have people flying from yes. all over the world and you have six hours to spend with them. Yeah. So, what I love about this property and what I think our clients love is that they can they can come here, they have two two days with their closest family, they can come and have coffee on the couch with grandma in the morning before the wedding. Um, I think that's really special. Nah, that's incredible. Yeah. I, I mean, I know for me, I can speak to my wedding 10 years ago. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, I, I felt the same way. It was like, it goes by in a flash. Yes. And before you know it, all the people that you had collected together to yeah, come together for you, like it's they're hard. all gone. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. And you, we, we hear it, or I, I hear it all the time mm -hmm. from couples that's like, yeah, I, I, I haven't, I don't even know what happened. Yeah. It went so fast. It go, well, your adrenaline is going, you're so excited, you're talking to so many people, you're overstimulated and right. it just flies by. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think the idea, and again, in the video, you'll be able to see a lot of the mm -hmm. hotel. I'm very excited to showcase just what, just how comfortable yeah. it is here. Yeah. You know, like the, when I walked in immediately, I was struck by the beauty and the, and how mm -hmm. unique the, the venue was. I think you were, yeah, were, you, were you calling it earlier, uh, an elegant rustic? Is that Yeah. So, uh, the modern rustic, a modern design. rustic yeah. design. Yes. Yeah. And it's just stunning. Mm -hmm. And so I can imagine my family, you know, sitting here having coffee, mm -hmm. uh, you know, my, my brothers or my mom coming down the stairs, yes. the, the stone, <laughs> yes. the stone stairs yeah, they, uh, and yeah. us being able to really enjoy each other's company and get mm -hmm. to get to catch up, you know? And yeah, and and I, I can't imagine 
how much value there is to that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very different than most of the venues where it's like, you, you, maybe you spend the day before setting up yeah. and then you go and then you get, you get ready there mm -hmm. and then you just have it and then you have the, the reception and then like you're gone and like exactly. everybody disperses and yeah. it, your Here, wedding really is like that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're having breakfast with your family. You're the, and, and that's really what we want to create here, not just for our weddings, but for transient guests is yeah. a, a safe space to relax and enjoy, um, it, you know, and just quiet your mind, right. you know? So even though weddings are stressful and can be a lot, we still hope that you can experience that piece here. hundred percent. And it, believe me, it is peaceful. Yeah, it is. I mean, I mean like when you, <laughs> it is you, peaceful. You, you have got to feel fortunate to work here mm -hmm. and be able to look out that window, yeah. those doors every day and be able to mm -hmm. see that. Cause I know when I walked in, probably the first thing I wanted to do was just take a nice deep breath. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just relaxing. Yeah, it is relaxing. I mean, of course, when you work in a place, sometimes that can wear off. But if you stop mm -hmm. and you, you know, enjoy certain spaces, like there are times when I'll go on the courtyard and I'll have a co my coffee before I dive in, just to really enjoy the proper property because it is a really unique and special place. 100%. Yeah. So let's talk about really quickly. This isn't just about a wedding. The conversation mm -hmm. is not just about the wedding. We're talking about the weekend, right? Yeah. So can you kind of take me through the amenities that you guys have here? Mm -hmm. What makes this place really the next level for bringing your family together, bringing mm -hmm. your friends together, and really having a memorable experience? So let me just kind of paint a picture for you from the check-in to check-out. So Friday, the, the group would check-in at 3 o'clock. Um, normally, that's the rehearsal dinner. Mm -hmm. um, so we greet all of our guests with sparkling wine um, when they arrive. And then we bring them up to their rooms. Uh, the rehearsal usually takes place on site if, of course, the ceremony is here. Mm. We always offer our couples to have the rehearsal dinner here, but they could also choose to go off site for rehearsal dinner. Um, and then uh, Saturday morning, we have a full service breakfast included. So uh, breakfast is included for all guests through their stay all the time. Mm. Um, we have special guest pantries that have white wine, red wine, soda, uh, snack mix, and bottles of water that's available to guests all the time. We also offer uh, massage on site mm -hmm. and yoga, so we can schedule uh, private or group yoga classes. We do couples massage either in room or also in our wellness room. Uh, we do have an infrared sauna. Most of our weddings will not enjoy some of those amenities because sure. they're preoccupied with other things for their stay. Um, we have a beautiful saltwater pool and we also have a brand new uh, in-ground hot tub spa that can seat about 12 people. Um, so so mm -hmm. let's just say if if, yeah. if they if they want to have an amazing weekend in style, yeah, <laughs> like, yes. yeah, like like you have every every yeah. option available for that. Yeah, and again, a lot of the weddings. So if it's a spring or summer month, mm -hmm. then they're always using the pool, especially guests yeah. that don't have a full schedule before the wedding actually starts. And of course, summer weddings are later in the day too. So the pool is probably the most popular amenity for weddings. Mm -hmm. um, not a lot of couples will enjoy massage or the workout. Uh, we have Nordic track bikes in there um, or the uh, infrared sauna just because, again, they're preoccupied with their family sure. or getting ready or the other details of the wedding. Um, but, of course, that is available to them. So Saturday, once the wedding happens, um, then it's we have the great party. And then Sunday comes along. Breakfast is included again, of course. And then checkout is at noon. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about location. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, and one of the things that I love so much about the location here is not only its proximity to Greenville, to mm -hmm. Asheville, but the things that you can do in this area. Mm -hmm. So for a lot of the guests who come here, what, what tends to be the things that you see them walking out the door to go do? What are, what are they really excited about and jazzed about? So I, I really think that if you are an explorer of all things outdoors, <laughs> then this is a great place to stay because... We have, I mean, hiking abound. You can leave from the front door to cycle, and we are a huge cycling destination. Mm. So that's obviously a big one for transient guests. Can you explain why? Because I think a lot of people yeah. are probably going to hear that and go, why? Yeah, of course. So uh, our owner, um, George and Rich Hincapi, George is a retired professional cyclist, mm. and uh, Rich Hincapi is his brother, and together they also own Hincapi Sportswear. Mm. Um, so we have uh, people who just, you know, they know of George, they know of Rich, and they come here and cycle. And honestly, we're, we're surrounded by incredible routes, cycling routes. So um, that is a big part of who we are. 
Um, and a big part of why they chose this location exactly. to, to, to do this business. Right? Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So we've, you know, just like any new business, I think you have a plan for the business and then it evolves over years. Um, and I think that the original plan really was to uh, stay, you know, stay focused on the cycling aspect, which is still very much who we are today. But we've also expanded in so many other ways, mm -hmm. especially with weddings and events. Yeah. Um, and that's really kind of a newer thing for us. In the past, uh, when we first opened the first three years, we maybe did two, four weddings a year. Um, you know, now this year we're doing 20 weddings. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not, and not just weddings, but corporate events, um, you know, rehearsal dinners, baby showers. Um, we have a health and wellness retreat that comes to us. They stay for us. So this, this is the perfect place for health and wellness retreat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're from Canada. So they come for 14 nights mm -hmm. and they do a, a huge detox program. They buy out the hotel. Um, there's no coffee. There's no alcohol. There's no sugar. They hike every single day. We take the remote control out of the rooms so this is literally a place for them to detox and um, get back to themselves how cool wow yeah so we I mean we see a wide range um, even with golf we have a golf retreat coming up this year uh, a yoga retreat that I'm working on so there's we wear a lot of hats um, but yes location is huge we have uh, wonderful lakes near us for paddle boarding kayaking so much hiking um, the gorge zip line is right up the street which is really, yeah, fun. really fun we have a lot of transient guests that are interested in that and then if you're not a big outdoor person you have two fantastic cities to explore right. you have Asheville and you have Greenville Hendersonville um, Saluda North Carolina is about 20 minutes past the watershed and it's a cute little town, yeah. you know, yeah. great little restaurants. Um, so we're really surrounded by so many activities. Yeah. And, and I, I know for one of the things I, I did before we got married was go golfing. There's a mm -hmm. golf course here, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, do you, do you want to speak on that for a second? Yeah. So lots of golf. Um, we are surrounded by Cliffs Properties uh, with fantastic golfing. Mm -hmm. And what's really unique about us. I mean. World class. Golfing. World class. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's be clear. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's be honest. Let's be it's honest. not. It's not. It's not your golf course down the street. No. Right? <laughs> and so, if you're not a member of the Cliffs, you actually can't go play right. at the at the Cliffs courses. But when you're a guest with us, you can. Yeah. So we can facilitate that for you. So that's also very unique. Um, but even outside of the Cliffs golf courses, there's Cherokee Valley. Um, you know, there's other uh, privately owned golf courses that even the public can go to. But we facilitate that for you. And actually, let me um, tell you about this as well. We have uh, three BMWs on site. Mm. So if uh, we have guests that come and stay with us and maybe they flew and took an Uber or a taxi, do they even have taxis in Greenville? Um, <laughs> at this point, it's all, at this point, it's all Uber. <laughs> I and, said taxi and, and I was like, I don't know if I've ever seen a taxi here, yeah. but Uber. Yeah. Um, so uh, if they don't have a vehicle, we have uh, three BMWs on site. We're partnered with uh, BMW hmm. where the guests can take the vehicles and explore at no charge. So it's, cool. that's also an amenity of the hotel that I didn't mention earlier. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's, yeah. that's so good. Um, all right. So let's get into kind of some of the different areas of the hotel. Mm -hmm. um, can you take me through... For a lot of play, for a lot of people, what are the places that's going to mean the most to them? So I guess we could start here mm -hmm. in the lobby. Yep. So when we have events take place on site, the hotel lobby and courtyard act as one area. So mm -hmm. when I get questions about the venue, I explain that it's an indoor outdoor wedding space. And it's a true <clears throat> indoor outdoor space. It is a true yes. So I would say the focal point of the events take place on the courtyard. That's where the meals are, the entertainment, the dancing, and then possibly the ceremony. Um, whereas this is kind of a lounge area, but there's a lot of flow through traffic because the bar behind me is what we is what we use um, for uh, for the main bar. If we have a really large wedding, we will incorporate our restaurant bar as well. Mm. But that doesn't typically happen. We, I would say that our events uh, range between 75 to 150. That's kind of our sweet spot. Mm. But we do see events that can reach 300, in which case we would open up more spaces. Gotcha. Yeah, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. um, I, I want to kind of talk about the outdoor space that you guys yeah. have here, where the ceremonies typically will happen. Mm -hmm. First yes. off, You've got this, I mean, mm -hmm. it looks like a painting out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I, so I, I've, I have been to France. Mm -hmm. And if I were to imagine any villa, countryside villa, you know, in the countryside mm -hmm. of France, 
this is exactly that was what the whole I would purpose. envision, yeah. right? <laughs> and so where they're getting married, I'm, you can kind of see me on the camera, I'm pointing outside, where they get married, um, there is a beautiful uh, waterfall kind mm -hmm. of feature that stretches along the middle of the pebbles that's on the ground. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's just against this backdrop of mountains, which is just... It's breathtaking, right? Yeah, it is lovely. I, I've been to a lot of venues where it's like you kind of have a view of the mountains, but uh -uh, like, and it's not going to show up very well yeah. in photo and video mm -hmm. just because they're you, so far. you see them, yeah. but you, they're not. This is different. Yeah. Right? Like this is actually a backdrop of mountains, which yeah. is just stunning. Um, and so typically when you guys have your ceremonies mm -hmm. out there, I, I'm just kind of curious. When people are walking in, when mm -hmm. guests are walking in and they see the place for the first time, when family and friends are coming in, mm -hmm. what's what's usually the reaction? Like, what what do you see come across their faces when they step out there? I think they're just excited. Yeah, you know, I think they're really excited to stay here, to be a guest here. Um, you know, and the ceremony location. You know, so we do ceremonies on the courtyard and also on the helicopter pad. Mm. But we also have tons of weddings that decide to have their ceremonies off site. But the great thing is, is, you know, to your point about the mountains is whether you have your ceremony on the courtyard or you have your ceremony on the helicopter pad, you're still getting fantastic mountain views in both locations. A, a beautiful view. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about the helipad really quick. Yeah. So like advantage of like why, why have it there on the mm -hmm. helipad? Is it, is it basically to kind of help with having this space ready after the ceremony for the reception? Absolutely. Okay. So. The courtyard, or so the helicopter pad is, uh, it's a really beautiful space, but you also have to use a lot of creativity when you go out there or sure. uh, imagination because it is a very blank spot. Um, but when it's, you know, when it has chairs on it, uh, possibly like an aisle runner, an arbor, flowers, a musician, mm -hmm. a drink cart, it really becomes a beautiful space. Mm -hmm. um, and again, you get lovely views of the mountains, but the reason why the helicopter pad is so popular is because when the ceremony is over, the guests can come right back to the hotel lobby for cocktail hour, mm -hmm. which would be in the hotel lobby space where we are now. And then reception would take place on the courtyard. And once the reception began, then all spaces would be open. But this allows um, the event to be complete yeah. by the time the cocktail hour starts. So we can do flips and we do do flips mm -hmm. where... We have a ceremony on the courtyard, guests come into the hotel lobby for cocktail hour, and we quickly flip the space on the courtyard. Um, not everybody loves that idea. It goes really smooth. Usually we flip the space in 25 to 30 minutes because we have a huge team to help us do it. Mm -hmm. um, and it works really great if you have about 150 or less in guests um, because we can't fit too many people in this space sure, comfortably. Sure. So really, it, the, where you have your ceremony, mm -hmm. ultimately depends on how many guests and family you have at your wedding. That, yeah. That's one of the big determining mm -hmm. factors. But uh, I think one thing to kind of keep in mind when you're having, what you're kind of talking about, about having your ceremony on the helipad, mm -hmm. it allows for the experience of not only you and, and your fiance, but the experience of all your friends and family just to be a little smoother, you yes. know, like it, it allows for the mm -hmm. day to unfold a little bit smoother. Mm -hmm. uh, it just allows for a little bit better experience for sure. Yeah. And yeah. I think also your guests, you know, you're showing them different aspects of the property. Mm -hmm. So as a guest, you show up and you're like, wow, where am I? This is a very unique place. And the yeah. next thing you know, you're having a ceremony outside in a field on the helicopter pad. And then you're being led to this hotel lobby that's just stunning. And then you're on the courtyard and you're kind of like, where have I been? Yeah, you know, this is yeah. amazing. So yeah, it, it's almost like you're every, every next thing that happens yes. on the day is opening up this little magical, yeah, <laughs> this new magical uh, surprise. Yes. It's like a, a new surprise for mm -hmm. your guests. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah. let's now talk <clears throat> just a little bit about the, uh, the restaurant. That's okay. Here. Cause I think that that is a huge part yeah. of the experience that everybody has here. Mm -hmm. So Restaurant 17. Yeah, Restaurant 17. Um, kind of take us through. I know that there's a new chef here, mm -hmm. and I know that's something that everybody's really excited about. Mm -hmm. So kind of take us through that really quick. So Restaurant 17, just to give you a history on the name, because everyone's always like, what does Restaurant 17 mean? So 17 um, is the number of uh, times that George was in the Tour de France. So oh, that's where that comes from. Got it. And then just about the hotel, Domestique is uh, the leader of a cycling team. So essentially, George was um, 
Lance Armstrong's leader uh, in the Tour de France. And it's also very fitting for us because we are here to serve and, and to lead our guests. How cool is that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. So, so yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, but the restaurant is is just fantastic. We really try to focus on um, kind of a Mediterranean hmm. uh, fare, but we also uh, branch out from that as well uh, with other styles. Um, and again, you know, based on the season, will kind of uh, direct us in which direction we go with our menu. Our menu changes about once a week, once every couple of mm. weeks. So we are constantly updating um, and and changing as a restaurant in what we offer our guests. So, you know, if you came here last year and had you know, a certain dish, most likely if you come that same time of year next year, we wouldn't have that. Um, but that's fun. It keeps it exciting no, and new. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's yeah. Really great. Yeah. Um, do you want to speak for a second, because we were kind of talking earlier also about um, how the food works here, catering mm -hmm. essentially yeah, works absolutely. here as a part of the, the weddings. And it is a very different experience mm -hmm. than what most people have. To me, it's, it's a fun experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it'd, be, yeah. it'd be something that I definitely want to do. So kind of talk yeah. us through, how does mm -hmm. that work? So not all of our clients are, are foodies. You know, some people choose our venue uh, for different reasons other than food, but that is a big part of who we are. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we do is we offer a three course complimentary dinner up to four guests for our booked clients. And that is the opportunity that they get <clears throat> to experience who we are as a restaurant and who our chef is. They don't actually get to taste their exact menu that they'll have for their wedding. Um, but when we're, when we're building their menu, they will get to sit down with the executive chef and customize their menu with cool. him. So uh, we will be helping guide them through what's available during that time of year. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be getting their dislikes, um, allergies, um, any dietary restrictions and implementing that into their menu. Yeah. Well, and I think what I love so much about that is that not only you get to experience the kind of service mm -hmm. that you can come to expect yeah. from having, having your wedding here, but what's really neat about that is you might not be tasting your exact dish that you're going to be having or serving on your wedding day, but you're still building trust. Mm -hmm. Like when, when you come in and you get to taste these incredibly unique dishes that Again, like you said, it more Mediterranean flair for a lot of it, but is different than what you would find at a, at a typical restaurant. You're definitely building this trust between the chef and the couple that says, "Listen, I'm not going to let you down." Yeah, like I, I'm mm -hmm. putting my heart and soul into your event and making yeah. sure that what you're eating is going to be unlike anything mm -hmm. you've ever seen before. Yeah, exactly. There is a lot. You know, we are asking the client to trust us, and we have had a few people that were a little bit nervous about sure. that. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> but I think if you if you take the time to get to know us and you do enjoy our restaurant, then I think you quickly realize that you can completely trust us. Um, and, uh, you know, the chefs just do a really fantastic job. And we're not, you know, we don't have hot boxes in the kitchen. Mm. We So when we are preparing food for a wedding, we are doing it to order. Mm. Um, you know, if So no rubber chicken. <clears throat> no rubber chicken. <laughs> no. So if there's a filet on the menu, I mean, your filets are being grilled probably... 20 minutes before they're going to be Ooh. sent out. And it, and honestly, That's making me hungry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just the thought of it. And it can be a little bit stressful. You know, yeah. if you work with other catering companies, everything is already prepared. Mm -hmm. Um, and I will say that it makes it so much easier. So I'm not knocking what they do because it, it works. Sure. But for us, <clears throat> we don't want to lose what we've created and who we are. So even if we have a huge wedding on the books and it would be, so much easier just to prepare food beforehand. We just won't compromise mm. who we are, you know. So even if if it's a little bit harder um, to get all those fillets out, 150 fillets, you know, in the nick of time, that's just what it's we'll do. It. Yeah, it's, it's worth, worth it because yeah. we want everyone to enjoy our food and be wowed. Mm. It's not just <clears throat> you know our proper our property is not just a wedding venue. There's so many other things that we do here so when we do have guests come on site for a wedding and our clients we want them to feel like they're not just at a wedding venue that mm -hmm. they are at you know a a venue that is is fine-tuned in every area mm -hmm. yeah i love it and and what's really cool about all of this mm -hmm. is that and i correct me if i'm wrong because that could be totally off base but it really does kind of pull its roots again back towards it being a European mm -hmm. style. Because in, in those countries, for the most part, they believe in the power of food and bringing people together 
and and, and celebrating mm-hmm. around having incredible dishes. Yeah. And the power that that has to bring people together and to have conversations. Yes. And to build relationships, right? And yeah. so to me, I think that's a really awesome and special thing about mm-hmm. this place is the fact that there's this restaurant on site that approaches weddings from that way. Exactly. And not just a wedding. You know, we're not yes. just pumping, you know, we are creating very unique dishes that could very well be on our dinner menu yeah. for our wedding guests. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, we don't separate it. You know, we we offer the same level of expertise and product to our clients as we do in our restaurant. That's amazing. Yeah, there's no difference. <laughs> yeah, that's super cool. That's super cool. All right, so that that sounds great. So I, I feel like that puts a nice little bow on the mm-hmm. on the restaurant side of it. Uh, what about the bar? What about because that's probably going to be another thing. Like because mm-hmm. uh, I think you mentioned earlier, you have drink packages, mm-hmm. um, all that kind of stuff. Do you want to yeah. kind of cover some of that stuff? Just, yeah, just for people to have an awareness of what you offer. Yeah, absolutely. So our bar, we have a fantastic front of house team, fantastic bartenders. And again, um, our food and beverage director is wonderful. Mm. Um, so she's the one who puts together all of our beverages um, from wine to beer to our cocktails. So we source locally for our beers. We have only craft beer. Mm. Um, we also uh, have a fantastic... This is a venue after my own heart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, only craft beer. We have weddings sometimes that'll be like, well, we really just want Bud Light. And we're like, we don't have that. <laughs> right. I mean, you can bring some Bud Light. No no offense to right, Bud right. Light drinkers, right. but we just don't have that. It's right. only craft beer. Right. Um, and then as far as the wine goes, uh, we have a really fantastic wine list. Um, we try to source wines um, from, you know, small, vin- mm-hmm. you know, from small production mm-hmm. uh, vineyards, uh, very esoteric um you know, locations, but there's a, a wide variety. So mm. uh, a lot of really fantastic wine options. And then our cocktails are so great. We have um, one cocktail in particular is my favorite. It's um, our Road of Vines cocktail. Mm. Uh, it's just absolutely fantastic. Um, so we have about probably seven signature cocktails on our menu. And again, they're always changing with the season. Um, you know, we have... Um, We have some rosemary, fresh rosemary and herbs that are growing around the property. So we try to incorporate a lot of that into our cocktails as well. Um, But they change often. And um, we have a great team of bartenders who are really thinking outside of the box to bring something unique to our guests. That's super cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You want to speak to the rooms for a second? Yeah, of course. And what what the rooms are like. So, you know, because I think that's going to be a big thing. Mm -hmm. Most people are going to think, okay, well, if I'm going to stay in this place for the Mm -hmm. weekend, you know, I I want to kind of get an idea of what my accommodations are going to be like. So do you want to speak to those? Sure. So we have 13 rooms total. We have eight king size bedrooms, four double queens, and one single queen. Um, All of the rooms are very similar in style, kind of that uh, rustic modern feel. Uh, Very beautiful rooms. All all of the rooms have different amenities though. So you may have a room that is a vineyard view or a mountain view. Mm. Um, You may have a room with a soaking tub or a fireplace. Uh, They're all very different, different square footage. but also very similar. That's cool. Is, is, there a tip, is there typically a room that the bride and groom will tend to stay in? Yep. So Lombardi uh, is at one of our king size bedrooms. That's our suite because cool. it has a vineyard, or I'm sorry, mountain views, um, a soaking tub, and a fireplace. Ooh. And it's just beautiful. Yeah. Also, it has a great views of the courtyard, which is nice for the bride to kind of look out her window and see the setup of the wedding. Awesome. Um, but all of our rooms are named after famous climbs in Europe, cycling climbs. Um, you know, just to name a few, it would be Lombardi, Colombier, Dijon, La Madeleine, Courcheval, uh, Tourmalet, Chartres. So uh, really unique rooms. And we don't, we use actual keys in our mm. rooms. So when the guest arrives, they'll have um, an, an old school looking gold key right on their nightstand. So there's cool. no sliders or, or codes to get into the rooms. It's very old fashioned. Yeah. Well, and I love that about it. Yeah, me too. I mean, I mean, I, I love it because again, it's, it, it, it is almost like the moment I step inside the door, I want to turn off my phone, mm-hmm. right? I want to literally like cut off all the electronics yes, and just relax. Yeah. <laughs> have, have a glass of wine and just honestly just sit here, mm-hmm. <laughs> just yeah. read a book. Or you know, check out the view. Yeah, or, absolutely. So that's really incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, so then, finally, let's let's kind of go to how, we've kind of talked about the ceremony a little mm-hmm. earlier about the locations and the different options for mm-hmm. that. Let's kind of chat just to, just for a second about um, uh, the reception. 
Okay. So when it comes to the reception, again, we're using uh, the outdoor area here yep. plus the indoor area here. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm going to show this in the video, but you've got these absolutely beautiful French doors that open up, you know, full, full, full glass doors that just open up so people can mm -hmm. meander in and out. Yeah. And I think one of the neat things, I tell couples all the time, because I, I get a lot of questions about venues and what mm -hmm. I think and whatever. And I tell people all the time that having a, a place that is a true indoor outdoor venue is really nice mm -hmm. because it allows mm -hmm. if things are getting maybe a little loud mm -hmm. or you know your older guests your grandparents yeah. and they want somewhere that's just more comfortable just to be able to go find a nook mm -hmm. and spend time you know catching up with family Absolutely. and get away from the party so to speak yeah that you know having places like this is perfect for that yeah you know you you have and i'll show you on the video too but you got a library that's in mm -hmm. there right on the other side of the fireplace yeah so i can just see somebody who's you know they had fun you know mm -hmm. they had dinner and and had fun you know watching people dance for a little while but then they can kind of meander inside not only stay warm but you know have a really intimate place yes. to be able to get with fan, friends and family like that's that's very special yeah it just I doesn't agree. happen everywhere mm -hmm. All right, so we talked earlier about ceremonies mm -hmm. and some of the beautiful options that are around the, the property for that. Um, I want to talk about res uh, the reception part of the day because that's a big chunk and mm -hmm. that's a really important chunk, I think, to a lot of couples. You mentioned earlier this is a true indoor-outdoor venue. And I have couples that talk all the time and ask questions about venues all the time. And that's one of the things that I always suggest that they find is a place that you don't just have one massive mm -hmm. room where everybody's kind of stuck the whole night, right? To have the ability for, you know, the grandparents, your grandparents, the older people of your party, they can be out there, they can have dinner, mm -hmm. they can enjoy the friends and the family that's there, they can enjoy watching dancing for a little while. Yeah. But to have a place for them to kind of meander into, like obviously there's beautiful, just comfortable places for them to sit here in the mm -hmm. lobby, or you have this really amazing um, uh, uh, book room, library. Yeah, library. Yeah, library. Thank you. <laughs> 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 I'm just looking for the word yeah. in my head. It is a big bookshelf. It's, yeah, so. it's a big bookshelf. Um, you know, right on the other side mm. of the fireplace in mm -hmm. here that they could meander in there. It's a little bit quieter. Mm. They can really enjoy intimate conversation you know, yeah, with absolutely. people that really matter to them. Like, to me, this is, if I could choose anywhere for just that kind of wedding and that style of wedding, this would be that place. Yeah. So saying all that, kind of take me through really quickly, what does a reception look like here? Mm -hmm. um, I'm guessing you guys do the setup and do dancing out there? Yes. So <clears throat> as far as the courtyard is concerned, I'll start with talking about the tent. Um, we have plenty of weddings where there's no tent. Mm -hmm. um, the courtyard does get fairly dark at night, so we do require that uh, if there's no tent that there's cafe lighting on the courtyard. Mm -hmm. Um, the tent is fantastic though. It covers the entire space on the courtyard. Mm. So uh, for bad weather, in case anyone out there is thinking like, well, what do you do if there's bad weather? Um, the tent is the answer to that question. <clears throat> so the courtyard, yes, it is kind of the main event space. The dance floor has been, so entertainment and dance floor have been all over the courtyard. There's so many factors, uh, whether you have a DJ or a band, if they require to be covered, if they require a stage, uh, there's so we can move the dance floor and entertainment really anywhere. Personally, my favorite place is by the trees. Mm -hmm. So that's the left of the courtyard with the entertainment with their back to the trees and then the uh, dance floor right in the center. I just feel like that's a really great focal point for the event space. Um, we've done photo booths out there before. All of the food will take place out there. So whether it's an individually plated dinner or uh, a buffet, or if we do a cocktail style reception, all of the food focus will be outside. Mm -hmm. But uh, it is really nice to have different lounge sections in the hotel lobby <clears throat> because uh, to your point, there are some guests who may want to sneak away. Grandma mm -hmm. may want to sit and talk to, you know, her her um, her sister. Her sister, yeah. yeah, exactly, on the couch and have coffee. Same thing with the library. It's a nice little space to hide away. It also creates uh, more spaces to incorporate unique design mm. um, and also do something different with. You know, the guys typically before the wedding end up in the library area with, you know, uh, maybe some glasses of bourbon to enjoy before the wedding. And it's a great photo opportunity. 
Yeah. That's I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's such a photogenic property yes. too. And so. I haven't even talked all about that yet. Yeah. We'll, we'll get there. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and you know, we can adjust our furniture in the space. Typically when we have weddings over 150, we will make a few adjustments and probably pull some furniture just to create more flow through. A because again, flow. the bar is behind us, which means that guests are flowing in and out all night. Um, but we also can remove a few items that the couple doesn't want. We've had plenty of couples that don't love the orange. So we'll pull the orange chairs and the orange pillows. Um, we could also add to the furniture sure. with unique blankets um, or uh, different kind of pillows. So there's really a lot that we can do as long as the design doesn't damage the property in any sure. way, we're happy to do it. You know, real candles. Um, we do sparkler send-offs all the time. Um, all right, so let's talk about then uh, about the team that the couple's going to put around themselves mm -hmm. to come here. Um, a lot of venues will require a wedding coordinator, a wedding mm -hmm. planner. Do you guys? Yes. Okay, cool. Yes. Do you want to speak on that? For yeah. yeah. So I, so obviously a photographer, um, you know, your entertainment, your venue, your caterer, all of that is huge. But I, I would say that your wedding planner is the nucleus of your event. Yes. They are the most important vendor. And a lot of times, um, people planning their weddings for the first time don't realize how important that is until they get into it. And I understand yes. because it's not tangible, mm -hmm. but uh, it took us a couple of years to figure this out. So the first year we didn't require a planner. And what happens is that falls on really mm -hmm. me. Yeah. Um, and then I can't give the client all, everything that they need because I'm covering the venue catering and now the planning portion right. of it. Right. Um, so then we learned that the hard way. And then the next year, what we did was we did require uh, a planner. Or no, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, we did require a planner, but we didn't have a list of preferred planner, uh, uh, planners. So it could be you know, someone that we've never worked with. Sure. That didn't go as well as we had hoped because you may have new people in the industry or, you know, hey, my aunt used to plan. She's going to do it. Um, so we didn't, we didn't love that either. Now we do require our... Uh, clients to hire a wedding planner from our list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I, I don't mind jumping in here. Mm -hmm. So I tell people all the time, if you've listened to the podcast for any length of time, mm -hmm. the two vendors that people usually will try to go without, usually most often it's the wedding planner. Yeah. And yeah. that's time and time again. If, if any of your vendors are having to wear too many hats mm -hmm. because you don't have a wedding planner, then they're not able to execute their job to their highest potential. Exactly. You hired them to do a thing. And of course, like as a photographer, I want to do the absolute best I can from mm -hmm. the photography video side. But if I'm also having to take care of wedding planner responsibilities, mm -hmm. that means that I'm going to have to have this debate with myself on the wedding day of, do I do what I'm supposed to be doing and get the best quality photo, right. the best quality video I possibly can mm -hmm. and, and tell the best story I can? Or do I go do this other thing that really should be you know, handled by another vendor? Yeah, exactly. Um, so I can't... Um, I just love the fact that you guys do that. And I, th and I, yeah. and I, and I totally, I totally get it. And I totally understand because mm -hmm. from your side, essentially you guys are having this, uh, struggle of, you know, we've developed this property that is the best of the best. And we want our experience that it, for our guests to mm -hmm. be the best of the best. Right. Right. So at the end of the day, if you have a wedding planner or you mm -hmm. have a vendor that comes in and is, it isn't able to provide that experience for your mm -hmm. guests, then that's, that's not what you. That's not what you envision. That's not right. as as a as a as a hotel hotel domestique, mm -hmm. as a brand. That's not what you guys want. Exactly, you know? and there are a lot of isms with our property. You know, we are not just your venue, but we're also your accommodations and your catering. Yeah. So there's a, lot, there's a lot. There's a lot happening on site. Yeah. And you know, our planners who've been with us for years know all of the nooks and crannies very well. Even mm -hmm. when it comes to design and how the tent is going to fall and where to put this and where to put that. And overall, it's just better for the client. Yes. It's, yeah. it, it makes for a very smooth process. When we have someone new come in, there's a big learning curve. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. And, and, I, and I agree with you. The, the wedding planner is the nucleus. You mm -hmm. know, it's, it, yeah. It, they're somebody coming in who's a fantastic planner and not only knows what to do, but can work well with everybody and work mm -hmm. well with people. There's no better asset you're going to have mm -hmm. on your wedding day to ensure I that everything goes well. Hundred percent agree, and you know, again, it's it's tough because you know, not 
you really you only throw one huge party your whole life okay. and that's weddings right. right this isn't the 18th century where it was like you had these balls and right. you know all the time but um so you know it feels like it's manageable but it's it's such a big event and mm -hmm. you really need someone who's professional um, that you can trust that can really guide you through how to do this and and how to do it effectively 100 percent, yeah and i tell couples all the time uh, the couples that we work with you mm -hmm. don't want a forgettable wedding right yeah you know? i mean yeah. No, nobody wants a forgettable wedding no and uh, there's so many parts on the wedding day that can spin out of control mm -hmm. um you know Ensuring, yeah. ensuring that you have somebody there to not only keep the trains running on time, mm -hmm. but that, like you said, understands the property, which is the beautiful thing about the preferred vendors that you guys have. Mm -hmm. Somebody who understands the property, who knows all the ins and outs, mm -hmm. who doesn't have to come in and figure out a game plan. They come in with one. Right. Like that's priceless. And if you think about it, what business doesn't have a manager? Sure. So when it comes to a wedding, you know, your event planner, your wedding coordinator is your manager. So if there's no one managing your event, just like if there's no one managing a business, then it's likely to fall apart. 100%. Yeah. yeah, 100%. Yeah, so this has been absolutely incredible. And again, you know, I want to recommend to everybody, if you're looking for the ultimate wedding experience, the ultimate wedding experience, you need to contact Sarah, mm -hmm. you, you got you, you need to reach out because yeah. this, this place is too special not to at least inquire about mm -hmm. and not to ask about. So, Sarah, with all that being said, mm -hmm. where can people reach out to? Where can they find you? You know, how do they contact you? So, of course, they can always call the hotel and ask for me. Um, but the best way to reach out is through our website. We have an inquiry uh, widget where you can fill in your information that will get sent directly to me. Then I'll send you. Um, all of the information for weddings, mm. um, but then also my email, which is very simple. It's Sarah with an H at hoteldomestique.com. Beautiful. Yep. Thank you so much, Sarah. Yeah, you're I welcome. I really appreciate it. Guys, yeah. I, hope you, I hope this was helpful. I hope this was informative. And uh, as always, you can always reach out and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, guys, have a great day. Uh, have a great month and have a great year. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.